All right, mathematicians, let's get started with proofs with perpendicular lines, section 3.4. Our essential question, what conjectures can you make about perpendicular lines? In our objectives, mathematicians will be able to find the distance from a point to a line, construct perpendicular lines, prove theorems about perpendicular lines, and solve real-life problems involving perpendicular lines. First, let's talk about um, finding the distance from a point to a line. Well, the distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. So let's take a look at our illustration. Let's say we have point A, A point, not on line K, and I want to know the distance from that point A to line K. Well, it's going to be that perpendicular length from A to a point perpendicular to line K, which we'll call point B. So the shortest distance from any point to a line is going to be the perpendicular distance. So this perpendicular segment is the shortest distance between the point and the line. So let's take a look at this situation. Which distance do you think is the shortest distance from point A to line L? So we've got distance from A to B, distance from A to C, distance A to point D, distance A to point E, A to point F. So it doesn't matter what point you pick on a line, which one's going to always be the shortest, keyword shortest distance from a point to a line. And hopefully you guessed correctly and chose line segment AD. This will always be the shortest distance from a point to a line, the one that is perpendicular. All right, so let's take a look at this example. Knowing that the perpendicular segment is the shortest distance between a point and a line, our example one, find the distance from point A to line BD. So here's point A and here's line BD. So we're looking for the actual distance, shortest distance, so that means we need to figure out the length from A to C because that's where we have a perpendicular segment intersecting line BD. So first we need to identify our distance formula. So from A to C we'll get the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. In other words, our distance formula. Next, substitute the x and y values according to the numbers and the coordinates. So we'll make x2, y2, point A, and we'll make point C our x1, y1. All right, then do order of operations. To conclude that negative four squared plus four squared results under the radical, and that simplifies to square root of 32. You can type that in the calculator, it comes out to approximately 5.567 units. So the distance from point A to line BD is about 5.567 units. All right, next let's take a look at the linear pair perpendicular theorem. If two lines are intersecting to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the two lines are perpendicular. Shorten that down to our implied. Intersect two lines with two congruent adjacent angles implies perpendicular lines. So here's an illustrative statement, if then statement. So fill in your notes with your implied and your illustrated parts. So if we have perpendicular, sorry, if you have intersecting two lines, here's our two lines, so line G and line H, with two congruent, we know they're congruent because of our arc marks being matching and the same. So we can say angle one is congruent to angle two for this image. So if angle one is congruent to angle two, then we have perpendicular, we can make our perpendicular symbol. G, line G is perpendicular to line H. All right, our next theorem, perpendicular transversal theorem, states that if transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. That shortens down to our implied. 
And write, down, write this down in your notes. So transversal perpendicular to one parallel line implies perpendicular to the other parallel line. So let's take a look at an illustrative if-then statement. So if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, we know these are parallel because of our parallel symbols, so if, if it's perpendicular to one line of two that are parallel, and we know that H is parallel to K and J is perpendicular to H, then it is perpendicular to the other line. So J is also perpendicular to K. All right, our final theorem for this new section, lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. So if two lines are perpendicular to the same transversal, then the two lines are parallel. So our shortened implied states, two lines perpendicular to the same line implies parallel lines. Let's look at an illustrative if-then version of this theorem. So if we have two lines that are perpendicular to the same transversal, our transversal is line J here. So we're saying that I <clears throat> is perpendicular to K Sorry, J, this should say J is perpendicular to K, and J is perpendicular to H. So if that's true, then we can say that H is parallel to K. The lines are parallel. And that's all for proofs with perpendicular lines. And get ready to do some proofs and practice in class. Bring clarifying questions, and I'll see you then.